Okay, here we go. We are live. Hello, everyone out in YouTube world. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're coming to you live from Van Arts, and this is our special live Q&A webinar all about our 3D character animation program. So we'll start off with a little round of introductions. Uh, my name is Ken Preby. I'm the Student Services and Communications Manager here at Van Arts. Um, I have a background in animation myself, not in 3D, but in other forms of animation. And my role at the school is uh, sort of be helping support students behind the scenes and also doing a lot of work with our marketing and admissions department, uh, helping to host events like this, info sessions and webinars all over the world to just tell you all about what we're what we do at the school and uh, my co-hosts can introduce it. Amelia you go first. Sure hello everyone my name is Amelia and I work for um, Van Arts Admissions Department and what I do here at the school is guide every student that is interested in our programs um, help them choose a program and then after that I guide them step by step towards the application and then um, all the way to admissions. So yeah, my job is to uh, help you out during the process and to uh, smoothly help you join the school. Excellent. All right. And Patrick. my name is Patrick Sorrell. I am uh, I am one of the instructors here at Van Arts. I teach in the web development and interactive design department. I also help with uh, the social media and the marketing. And uh, I co-host these webinars with Ken to tell people from around the world all about the great programs we have and the possible job outcomes. So I'm hoping that you are interested uh, in learning more about 3D animation. We've got a lot of interesting stuff to tell you and to show you where our graduates are working now and what projects that you've seen they have done work for. Okay. So welcome. Yeah. Yes, welcome well everyone. All right. So um, all of you watching on YouTube, I see that a lot of you guys are saying hello and uh, doing the fives and emojis and all that kind of stuff. So that's great. We want to see that. This will be, this will, there will be opportunity for interaction once we, we're going to show you some stuff and then, but while we're doing that, um, feel free to type in the chat. Let us know who you are. Let us know where you're watching from and let us know a bit about yourself. Are you a high school student? Are you a college student? Are you thinking of animation as a career change? Uh, so let us know who you are and where you are. And uh, you can use the chat to, when we open up for questions later on, you can use the chat to ask us questions as well. OK, so now that that is established, um, Amelia, we're going to turn things over to you for a bit and just tell us a bit about this program. Yeah, for sure. All right. So if you are someone who's always dreamed of bringing characters to life, you love drawing, if you grew up watching cartoons and featured films, um, this is definitely a program for you. Um, the 3D Character Animation Program is a 12-month program here in Vancouver, and it is focused mainly on giving you all the tools and all the skills that you need to succeed in the animation industry after you graduate. And the animation industry, um, the animation industry can branch out to TV, to film, and also to advertisement and the video games. So our job here at the school is to give you all those skills for you to be able to join the industry and be a successful animator. Um, and yeah, we teach the 3D character animation program as if you were already working at a studio. So this helps you transition very smoothly from our school into a studio or like for work afterwards. And um, you get a lot of mentorship as well. Our classes are very small. We only admit 20 to 22 people per intake, uh, which means that um, your learning process and progress is really good with a very like with a very good ratio with um between students and instructors and our instructors are um are people who have worked in the industry for 25 plus years, 30 years, who are super up to date with what is going on in the industry, which makes the curriculum very adaptable. And that means that anything that's going on in the industry, we're going to teach you here at the school. So once you go to the industry, you will have no problem working. Um, and yeah, in Vancouver only, there's over 65 studios. And that means that there's a lot of work out there. And this school is the gateway to the industry. All right. Mm -hmm. Very good. Cool. So the next thing we'll do is uh, we'll show you a little bit of um, a little bit of our student work, uh, just a little short reel of some of the work that our students have in their final demo reels um, at the end of the 12 months. So let's take a look. 
to bend reality to my will. My wings are hurricane. To bend. All right. All right, cool. I got a little little trigger happy with the buttons there, but there we go. <laughs> cool. So Amelia, I have a question about the student work we just saw. Yeah. What software do the students use in this program to create all that amazing stuff? Maya. So we're going to teach the 3D character animation program with Maya, which is the industry standard um, software at this time. All right. Awesome. OK, so um, in 12 months, that's the kind of stuff you get to produce. And then after the program, uh, Patrick, we're going to let you talk a little bit about what's going on in Vancouver with the industry and the studios that hire our graduates after the program. Sure. Um, and, and just before I get into that, I just want to also add too, it's the great thing about our program, I think the thing that differentiates differentiates us from other schools is the focus on character, really learning how to make a character come alive. And it is a lot harder than people think. And these guys right here are probably the masters of the world in making 3D characters come alive. Mm -hmm. um, this is Weta Digital. They, the big news is that they are opening up their first studio outside of their headquarters in Wellington, New Zealand, and they chose Vancouver to set up shop. That kind of gives you an idea of like what type of cluster is right in our backyard here at Van Arts and the quality of, of people that are emerging. Um, what is like a very big deal? They're going to open up and immediately hire 75 animators to work on projects. They are working on the next four Avatar movies, um, which, you know, are still, you know, there's one supposed to come out at the end of the year. Um, they did the uh, um, Ape FX uh, motion capture from the Planet of the Apes films, the last three of them. Um, they just do amazing work. And they're year after year nominated for Academy Awards. So it's very exciting to have Weta open up a shop here. And it's going to raise the caliber uh, of the people that are employed and also the caliber for the other studios because they're going to want to hang on to their top talent. So this type of move to come into Vancouver is a really, really fantastic thing for the schools, for the workforce, for the studios, and everybody that enjoys really good character animation and movies. Mm -hmm. Cool. So that's a bit about that. Now, the other big news, this is from about seven months ago now, was Disney coming to town to open up its studio. Um, <clears throat> they're also a very large company, of course, uh, internationally known, been around for 70 years. They're primarily going to start doing series work up here. There's a lot of content that Disney needs. Not only do they have the cable Disney channel, and not only are they, are they producing stuff for uh, other networks, they now have Disney Plus to create a lot of content for. Um, so it is it is a juggernaut, and it is going to be hiring hundreds of different animators and the support staff for all these positions. Um, it's going to be an exciting time, and the same thing too. When Disney comes to town, it's got a big cachet name. Uh, people want to work for Disney. It looks great on their resume. So the same effect that is going to happen uh, that I mentioned with Weta is happening right now at Disney. People are looking for positions. Uh, they might be moving from other studios, and the studios that are in town really want to make sure that their animators are happy and staying with them. So, yeah. That's right. 
So this is another one too. Um, so ILM, they've been doing digital work. Industrial Light and Magic is the studio up here. They've been doing work um, uh, for a while in town, doing visual effects and also um, uh, animation, 3D animation. Um, we have several graduates that have worked on Book of Boba Fett, uh, The Mandalorian, um, every single new Star Wars film since The Force Awakens. Um, but they're going to be opening up uh, what is called a uh, volumetric space, which means that um, you're going to be able to interact, the actors are going to be able to interact with a real-time fluid 3D background. So the sets that you've seen for The Mandalorian, where they're on different planets and it's, it's photorealistic and it looks amazing, that's the same type of technology that's going to be put in the town. And that's going to hire people that need to be physically on set and make changes, lighting changes, shading, all of that, as the actors and the directors want to do different shots. So it's a new branch of job title happening for a 3D animator. Same time, they're also expanding their workforce. Um, they're still doing effects for, I think there was eight or nine new announced Star Wars TV shows, and they're also doing Marvel TV shows. There are several animators that their latest credit from Grand Up Banner's earliest credit is on Moon Knight, where they did character animation. And there's more that are coming and being announced uh, every single week that we're discovering. Wow. Okay, then these guys. Largest video game publisher in the world, Electronic Arts Canada. Oh, Electronic Arts. Um, Electronic Arts already has a studio in uh, Burnaby, which is a suburb of Vancouver, and they've grown to 2,000 employees. Been there several times. It's so large, they have an indoor basketball court, they have an outdoor sand volleyball field, and also a soccer uh, um, uh, green uh, space, uh, full-size soccer. So they also have two, whatchamacallit, uh, cafeterias. It's a giant campus. Um, but now they're going to actually hire on uh, and open up another second major studio in town. It's actually about 15 minute walk away from Van Arts. It's going to be um, uh, at a, on a street called Great Northern Way, which is, we can see it from mm. looking out the window of Van Arts. And nobody is talking about what titles that they're going to be working on here. There are some rumblings of things. Uh, the, the current office is known for all of EA's sports franchises. So um, every year NHL uh, and NBA comes out from there. Uh, also Plants vs. Zombies to uh, UFC fighting, I think, which is every couple of years or so. So no one's really sure what the titles are. They're going to be in the new building. Uh, there's some rumors possibly a star wars game maybe oh. maybe taking an old ip and uh brushing it off for the 21st century but no one's really talking officially just yet but that's an exciting thing they're going to hire several hundred more people and we firmly expect that we're going to be able to be best buddy neighbors with them uh when they set up shop and the mm. lights are on. yeah we've had a lot of grads working at ea over the last 20 Last, last couple decades of fan arts yep. as well. Dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens just for FIFA, which is another one I forgot to mention. Yeah. 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 Okay. So that's a good, uh, what we took, we took a GoPro and threw it up in the air really high. And this is the photograph we got, which is really good. Very, very fortunate. <laughs> um, so and where are we, where are we in this picture? Down by yes. that uh, little red, that little bubble that says Van Arts. The little, the little bubble with, with the, 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 the uh, squiggle pointing down is our building right there. Yeah. So we're, we're at a very pretty part of the city. It's, it's called um, False Creek. False Creek. And, uh, we are one block away from uh, the SkyTrain, which is our version of, you know, a subway system. Um, that big ball you see by the water is called Science World. You've probably seen it in a few movies and TV shows. It's really lovely. And when the weather is warm and sunny, you can go walk around here, um, get, you know, bites to eat or just hang out, eat your lunch uh, by the waterfront. There's a big green space slash park. Uh, a five minute walk away. Um, you can take the sky train and go out to the suburbs or you can go downtown where that other big white circle is, which is the stadium and lots of other things going on there. Um, it's a very picturesque city, big picturesque city. And if you want to really see what it looks like, 
just go watch the last two Deadpool movies, okay? They were <laughs> all over here, and literally the first Deadpool movie was filmed about ten minute walk away when yeah. they have the big fights on on the bridge. That's right next to us as well, too. They, well, they um, shut down it, the Georgia Viaduct. They shut it down, yeah. But yeah. it's it's the world's biggest hub for animation and visual effects. Um, I, I one person who works in the uh, vi visual effects industry tells me that every major Hollywood release is worked on in some capacity in Vancouver in some yeah. sort of way with visual effects. Um, just a tremendous, tremendous output. I, I would estimate there's at least 10,000 workers in both of those sectors, if not probably closer to 13,000. It's just getting bigger and bigger all the time. Yeah. Yeah, the demand is growing really, really high. And we've talked a lot about the, uh, you know, like the big name studios like Weta, Disney, EA, uh, ILM, but there's a lot of smaller studios mm -hmm. as well. Uh, even in our own building here, we have, there's a visual effects company called COSA. And so they're going to need animators as well as visual effects artists. They're actually in the same building as us. Right. Uh, Ayugo Mobile is next door. Right next door. Um, and so is Activision Blizzard. Activision Blizzard. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're right in the neighborhood. Back in for Call of Duty. Right, yeah. Blackbird Interactive is is pretty close too. So Blackbird of, Interactive is very close. Yes. Yeah, down by Emily Carr. So I mean, there's a lot of we're sort of in the neighborhood where a lot of the studios that hire our grads uh, are, and um, you know, and some of them specialize in visual effects, some of them specialize in animation, animated series, some of them do a little bit of everything. So that's good news if you want to be an animator. This is the time to be doing that. Do, doing this that's stuff. another really good point that Ken brings up is, is that some of these projects are so massive and so expensive that they need, uh, they get behind and they need help from smaller studios to come in mm -hmm. and work on a sequence uh, and get it done. Um, that happens a lot. There's many studios that, that fulfill that support role in town, like Gold uh, Tooth Creative, mm -hmm. uh, Waterproof Studios, which is producing tons of amazing 3D animation for games uh, and also for series. Um, and, and when Ken says these are smaller studios, we mean that they might be 25 to 200 people as opposed mm -hmm. to like a thousand so, and there's smaller ones than that too. There's people that go off and, and start their own studios and they grow as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, it is a really healthy ecosystem of small, medium and large companies that are helping each other out. And the demand for this entertainment has been accelerated because of the COVID pandemic. Yeah. People need to watch more shows because <laughs> they're stuck at home. Right. All right. Cool. So uh, one thing we want to do now is we want to show you guys, we want to share with you guys a special video. This is actually a world premiere for this video. Nobody has seen this except for some of us here at the school. Uh, one of our graduates, we have we have thousands of graduates working in 3D animation because we've been around for you know over 20 years, 26 years. And so, um, but every single one of those graduates has their own individual story of how they got there and what kind of stuff that they're doing. So we wanted to share one of these stories. This is one of our graduates um, named Regan Greenwood, who's from British Columbia, but she's working in the UK now. And uh, she started her career here in Vancouver, uh, but she was in town a few weeks ago. And so we took the opportunity to, uh, to interview her and ask her, you know, what, uh, how has your career been since finishing at Van Arts many years ago. So we want to share this with you guys, uh, just a short video about just one of many grads and the story of her success. So here we go. My name is Regan Greenwood. I am from British Columbia, moved around a bit as a kid, but I would say that I'm mainly from Ashcroft, Cash Creek area. Well, initially I had always loved drawing but then there was just the, the additional magic trick of bringing stuff to life. The, the, the magic of storytelling, I guess, the technique behind it, the fact that it got to use so many different parts of your brain, like not only are you thinking about how it looks artistically, but you're also thinking like how do things actually move, what's the, the physics and the body mechanics behind it, and also the, the technology element was really interesting, like the different toys you got to work with. I had researched which schools were ranked rather highly, uh, and Van Arts was one of the best in Canada, in addition to being a one-year program. So you could go 
basically right into the industry. You didn't have to faff around with a lot of extra uh, courses that are not required for animation. Obviously, you'll learn the principles of animation. You'll get a good start in with the software and you'll learn how to budget your time and plan for your scenes and plan for your film. You will also make good contacts with people within your school and with the teachers and it'll open a lot of doors. Well, my first job, that was on Pirate Express at Atomic Cartoons. After Pirate Express, uh, at Atomic. I went over to Bardell and I worked on Captain Jake and the Neverland Pirates, which was a, a Disney production. I went back to Atomic as a lead animator on The Legend of the Three Caballeros. From there I went into 3D animation. I worked on Super Dinosaur at Atomic. And after that I got hired to work in England <laughs> at Brown Bag Films on Nella the Princess Knight. When that concluded I was hired by the same company uh, on Powerbirds as a lead animator and line manager, managing a team of four. And now I'm at Cloud Imperium Games working on Star Citizen and Squadron 42. Just getting to bring stuff to life. Like you, you get to work with really amazing people and create something together that you couldn't do on your own. So you get to make something that's really grand and amazing. It's definitely creating something from nothing basically. It's really, really cool. All right. Okay, so that is an example of one, one story. And I should say, I didn't mention that, you know, Reagan took the 3D character animation program at Van Arts, but she also took um, uh, the 2D animation stream, which is a separate a separate program at Van Arts. The assignments are the same, but it's a different medium. So she actually learned both, uh, which was advantageous for her because she can actually go uh, one way or the other. Some graduates do that, not all of them do, um, but uh, it kind of shows you the opportunities that are out there and the different studios you can work at. So all Reagan right. mentioned that she's working on um, a video game called Star Citizen. Right. That one of the biggest, no, it actually is the biggest funded video game of all time oh really it's like raised wow i want to say over 400 million dollars on, oh. on kickstarter it's been i mean it's been in development for years and there's a bit of controversy about that too but it is it is probably the most ambitious video game like a persistent mm. universe game and there's hundreds of people working on it so it's, wow. that was new that. to me when she mentioned uh that she's working over there at that company cool that's yeah, great. that also shows how you're able to branch out. So she's doing TV, she's doing film, and she's yeah. doing video games. So that's a really cool thing about this program that you're able to branch out and mm -hmm. basically do any of those things plus advertisement because brands also need characters. They also need um, uh, commercials. They need um, tiny clips and films for commercials on social media, et cetera. And that's where you come in as an animator and a storyteller. Yeah, yeah. That, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a good point. Because especially mm -hmm. in 3D, because 3D encompasses video games and mm -hmm. TV series and feature and films film. and everything you just said, um, all that kind of stuff. Uh, whereas 2D is mostly TV series work. Yeah. Um, most a, a lot i mean our 2d our 2d grads are doing great as well but uh they're not working on a whole lot of features uh, most of it is tv series work so 3d does open things up to uh -huh, another totally gamut of stuff but um so these are some of our graphics if you haven't figured this out already the number in the corner of each of these squares is the total number mm -hmm. of graduates from uh, 3D animation, but also visual effects and game art and design, and in some cases, acting as well, that have worked on each one of these shows. Um, Patrick, you want to tell us a bit about these since you kind of have a hand in putting these together sure. for our social yeah, these, media channels? These are these are always going up because <laughs> some, of the, some of the graduates are like, they just don't update their IMDb too much, you know? Um, and sometimes they can't until the actual episode or film gets released. Right. So we constantly are trying to go back and find out who's who's working on things. Um, but yeah, it gives you an idea of like the diversity and, and what's going on and all the different projects. And these are people working for studios, a whole bunch of different studios and also around the world. It's not just in Vancouver. Um, the one there for like, if you actually, if Ken goes back for a sec, the one there for um, uh, NHL 20 
Okay, that is local because we talked about EA being in Burnaby. Um, okay. Gears 5, Microsoft opened up a studio here and employed 300 people to make their Gears of War, latest Gears of War franchise. So that's some examples. But I mean, Venom, uh, there were several do dozen animation and visual effects studios that worked on that. And that represents the eight people from around the world uh, doing those things. Um, and then the next one, these are some of the newer ones. Uh, Halo TV show, we found three people that have already announced that they've worked on uh, the project. Uh, Halo Infinite was actually designed locally by a company called Skybox Labs. And uh, we know that for sure two of the people have worked on there. Um, and Mitchell's in the Machines is one of the best received animated movies from last year. Proud to have five people on that. The Flash, um, some of the people, it's filmed locally. Some people work on it locally, but it also represents people that are working in uh, FX studios in LA. Mm. Um, Spider-Man, Spider-Verse, Sony Imageworks is in town. And those nine pro are most likely local. And there are people right now working on the two sequels that can't officially tell us that they're working on it, but there's a good number of, of, of grads and I'm sure that number is going to be pretty healthy when we can talk about it in a year or so. Yeah. Um, and then it's like, yeah, just another uh, example. There are dozens and dozens and dozens. And these are going to go back a little farther, but it shows how like, it accumulates. You know, mm -hmm. Aquaman has like a tremendous number of people that worked on it. There were so many studios involved and there was so much 3D animation and visual effects it is one of the sizable projects, you know, that, mm -hmm. that we have Van Arts graduates working on in the last few years. Some of them, like Game of Thrones, a lot of the effects uh, were done around the world, but one big chunk was done by a company called Scanline, and they hire a number of our grads. So mm -hmm. it was accumulating over eight years, uh, people working on that. Rick and Morty uh, has also been accumulating the people that have been working on it season after season. Uh, Once Upon a Time, same sort of thing. Um, so yeah, some of these, some of these have like clusters of large numbers of people and it slowly increases, especially if it's a TV show. Sometimes it's a smaller amount of people. Um, you know, we've had people work on a couple of years ago, Blade Runner 2049, Battle Angel Alita. Um, we've had a, an alumni, a Van Ars alumni work on every single Marvel project going back to Iron Man 1. Mm, yeah. So it is, we have we have an unbeaten streak and we're pretty happy about that. It's kind of cool. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, the need for these animation and, and visual effects, yeah, as Ken said, it's just growing bigger and bigger and bigger all the time. Yeah, yeah. Going back even farther, we had like grads on every single Harry Potter film. You know, this is going back 20 years, but, uh, you know, it kind of shows you how long we've been doing this as well. That is yeah. true. That is yeah. true. The numbers were smaller, but yeah, yeah. we do but have a still, legacy. Yeah, definitely. All right, cool. So as we have been saying, if you haven't figured it out by now, uh, you know, this is really, if you're thinking about applying for a one-year program that will basically get you in, get you trained, get you out there, start working, because as you can tell, the jobs are there and the demand is really, mm -hmm. really high right now. So, I mean, this is one of the best times I've ever seen uh, for opportunities out there for animators. So, um, so we're going to, Amelia, tell us, tell you a bit about how to actually go about applying to the school, and then we'll... Um, open up, hopefully this will answer some of the questions you guys have, but any other questions you have, will open up for Q&A um, afterwards. So Amelia, take it away. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so it's really easy to apply. Uh, more than anything, uh, we wanna see four, um, no, sorry, five things from you. So the first one um, would be to, okay, we can do this first, sorry. So you have to apply online, first of all, and we do suggest that you apply as soon as possible. If you're interested in September, 2022, uh, we mm. do have a class that's filling up very quickly. Uh, there are still some spots left, but I do want to urge you to apply as soon as possible and submit your uh, required admissions materials um, so that you can get a spot as soon as possible and save it. Um, as we said before, we only admit 20 to 22 people per intake um, and and it's important that you save your seat as soon as you're admitted into the school. And after that, um, after you are admitted into the school, you're going to receive a reply in three to seven days or so. And then, yeah, you're ready to join the school and, yeah, make your dream come true. All right. Uh, hold on. Where's, oh, there we go. 
All right. So these are the admissions requirements. So the first one would be a portfolio. Uh, your portfolio needs to showcase your skills for planning and drawing for animation. And it's 12 pieces of your best artwork. We're going to talk about specifics um, in a bit. But 12 pieces of your best artwork that showcases um, your planning for animation skills and your drawing skills. And we also want to see a letter of intent where you let us know why you've chosen Van Arts, uh, why animation, why 3D, what you want to do after you graduate, anything that lets us know a little bit more about you and also um, why you've chosen our school. So I do suggest that you try and do as much research as possible, connect with your advisor, um, research about the faculty, and that way you can you know, let us know more clearly why you've chosen us. We also want to see a resume. You're not required to have experience in the industry yet. We will teach you everything you need here for you to do that. But we do want to know about, um, you know, you and what you've been up to. So we want to see all of your education. We want to see where you've worked, if you've had any jobs before. If you haven't, that's also okay. Um, we also want to see if you've volunteered, if you've ever uh, done any if you've ever participated in any um, contests with your art, if you've won any awards, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, the more you can tell us about you, the better. Tell us about sports you play, languages you speak, anything you think is relevant for us to get to know you better as a person. And we also want to see a proof of age document. And um, if you're a, a Canadian citizen or PR, we're going to have to see um, proof of that so that we can apply domestic fees. And if you're an international student, um, you can uh, show us your passport um, or your driver's license. And we're also want to see. We're also going to want to see your high school or college transcripts. Um, if your first language is English, um, the English proficiency test results requirement will be waived with your transcripts that prove two or more years of studies in English. And by this, we don't mean English literature. We actually mean English, like you you learned in English. Because a lot of the time, I'll get people that tell me like, "Oh, but I only took a few." a few classes uh, a few English classes when they actually learned everything in English so that's what we mean it has to be taught in English and um yeah other than that uh your high school uh transcripts will let us know a little bit more about you as a student as well uh, but don't worry too much about that uh, we don't focus too much on your grades we don't believe that your grades from high school uh portray um um, how good of an artist you are. So don't worry too much about your grades. Um, and yeah, if you are an international student, you do have to take an English proficiency test, which can be the IELTS, the TOEFL, it can be the Cambridge, the TOEIC. We have a very long list um, on our website. Uh, there's over 16 options, I believe. So you can just choose the one that suits you better. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the portfolio examples. So as you can see, these are characters. Uh, we do have a guideline online that you can download. It's a PDF and it has exercises, it has examples. Um, and I do encourage you to try and follow them very carefully. It is really important for us to see that you're able to follow instructions. And a lot of the time I will have our head of department return portfolios and ask me, tell them to follow the instructions. So it's really important that you really follow them very closely. Um, and, and, oh, Chacha Charlie is here. Yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> yeah, hi. Uh, but yeah, so we also want to see location sketches, um, other than your characters, we want to see that, um, that, you know, that you've, uh, ex um, you have some experience with live drawing as well. We want to see geometric shapes, uh, but we do not want to see portraits or paintings. Uh, it's awesome if you can do that, but that doesn't tell us your skills um, as, as an animator or for planning animation. So uh, we don't want to see that. We don't want to see graphic design. If you choose to do your sketches and drawings um, on in a tablet or um, digitally, that's perfectly fine as long as you follow the instructions. And here you can see some 3D models as well. Well, you can also send some 3D models if you have some. And if you have some animation, feel free to send that our way as well. Um, but make sure that at least half of your portfolio is characters in dynamic poses. So what that means is um, that you can draw one character doing at least six different poses. So say, for example, if you wanted to draw a basketball player, it would be the basketball player holding the ball, throwing the ball, bouncing the ball, et cetera, et cetera. But the same character in six different poses per page. And that's half of your portfolio. And then these are some more examples. Um, if you have some um, 3D models, as we said, feel free to send them to us. Um, 
and yeah, that's 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 it for your portfolio. And please feel free to send them my way. I can go over your portfolio. I can give you feedback. I can ask an instructor to go over your portfolio, and um, that way we make sure that you that you get into the school and also that you can aspire to a larger scholarship because we do have scholarships. I do know mm. that's going to be a question. So we do offer scholarships to both international and domestic students and they are merit-based. So that means that depending on the high quality of your portfolio and rest of required materials, an amount of money will be assessed and deducted from the total cost of tuition. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I do encourage you to work alongside um, your admissions advisor, which will be me in this in this case, and I will do my best to guide you every step of the way. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. And I've put some links in the chat. You guys probably noticed. Um, so our admission requirements are all listed here. Uh, so that link is in the chat. You can click on it and bookmark it and study it a bit a little bit more in more detail later on. So everything. If you weren't taking notes just now, don't worry. It's, it's mm -hmm. all on our website in even more detail. And also the um, this this link here to the PDF, uh, which we um, which which we also talked about, has really specific guidelines for an animation mm -hmm. portfolio specifically, since that's what we're talking about here today. Mm -hmm. So um, that's great. And one of our guests in the webinar um, goes by Cha Cha Charlie. <laughs> He's been making some great comments. I believe he's starting in September, yes? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's joining us very soon, so that's awesome. Yeah. He spent a lot of time going to webinars and checking us out. Yeah, there. we've seen him before. Yeah, yeah good. good for yeah. him. He really did his research. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And he yeah. got in, you guys, so yeah. Do your yeah. research. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna meet him soon. Yeah. He shows up and be like, hey, it's Cha Cha Charlie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we're, we're gonna expect to see a red ghost. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, <laughs> that. Okay, so at this point, you guys uh, open up for we're open up for questions. So if you guys have any questions at all, this is the time to go ahead and um, type them into the chat. Uh, there's one question I have seen here so far already. What about a post grad degree in animation? So Van Arts offers diploma programs. All of our programs are 12 month diplomas, um, including it, the 3D character animation is of course the one we're talking about today, but we also have visual effects. We have game art and design. Mm -hmm. We have 2D character animation, uh, photography, acting, and web. So they're all separate programs, but they are not degree programs. They are uh, diplomas and it's only 12 months. So when we say 12 months, it's like literally 12 months. Mm -hmm. It's a calendar year. Uh, our start dates are in March and September every year. Um, so we don't offer degrees through Van Arts. That being said, we do have degree pathways, which is sort of a whole other thing that um, that people can ask about. Uh, we have a few different colleges that we partner with uh, here in Vancouver and also in other parts of the world too, where you can pursue a degree after spending a year with us. Mm -hmm. uh, your diploma at Van Arts can uh, basically be transferred as credit towards a, um, a few different degree programs that we have an articulation with. So then you can get a diploma and a degree from a different school and kind of combine that together. Um, that is particularly useful for international students who, um, if you're from a country that's not uh, eligible for the, um, the postgraduate work permit, which Van Arts is not, uh, but if you do a pathway in Vancouver after Van Arts towards an advanced diploma, um or degree then you would be eligible for the postgraduate mm -hmm. um and the march intake is available for postgraduate diploma yes yeah whether you start in march or whether you start in september you're going to graduate with the same diploma from van arts as long as you pass every course within the program <laughs> Yeah, and graduate. <laughs> and graduate. Well, that's important. Let's say that you do have to put the work in. Yeah, that's a yeah. fair thing. We this is a very intensive year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> One other thing to like follow up on is um, we hear from the animation instructors all the time about studios asking them, mm -hmm. like, do you have talented students right now that mm -hmm. we want to hire as soon as they walk out the door? Like, this is not a lie. Literally, they're telling us this in admissions and, and marketing. So 
if you come here and you have passion and dedication and you, you prove yourself, it's looking really sweet. <laughs> like, like that's best describe it there. I mean, go online, take a look and see how many jobs are being offered for animators, 3D animators in the Vancouver area. Mm-hmm. And you'll see what we mean. Um, yeah. And also this goes for 2D as well. But 3D is just, you know, our head of department tells us they're just, the studios are just hungry for people. And mm-hmm. so you show your ability to have talent, but also follow instructions and, and prove yourself and be part of the team. And that's what Van Arts also tries to do is we want to make you job ready mm-hmm. in one year. We don't yeah. just want you to be a great animator. We want you to be a great member of an animation team because that's important as well too. The, mm. Your employers want to know that you're going to be one piece of a larger uh, team and that you're going to work together in unison. So that's another reason why we, mm. we, we feel that Van Arts has got a special reputation among, among the studios. And we invite you to, you know, ask of our head of department, talk to him about what the um, what he's hearing from uh, the industry and why he's telling us why, you know, studios want to hire good qualified animators. So if you're on the fence about this and, and you're one, you're, you're, you're worried about like the job positions or, or what's going on, do a little bit of digging. We can help you out with that. Amelia can put you in yeah. touch with Wayne Gilbert, our head of department. He can put you in touch with studios you can find out what's going on. So all you have to do is come here and be willing to learn and it's looking bright. Mm-hmm. For sure. And in general, our students are very passionate about this and that energy is very, very, very um, contagious. So we do see a lot of really amazing work. Uh, and then we see our students do amazing things like the ones we just showed you. So it's definitely doable. It may seem um, it may seem like it might just be a dream that you're not sure if you can m- make come true or not, but it definitely will. Um, if you come to our school and you are very dedicated, you're very passionate about this and very willing to learn and very open to um, critique from your and constructive criticism from your instructors, then yeah, as Patrick said, it's gonna look really good for you in the future. And it's only after 12 months. So it's just 12 months of your life of really working really, really hard. And then after that, it's all really good for you. Yeah. Cool. All right. So this question was from Piyush, who is who actually said they're from India and it's early in the morning in India right now. So thanks for getting up early to, to join us. Um, says, I am good at drawing skills, especially hyper-realistic sketches and illustrations, and I have a bachelor in computer application, but I want to do animation. Will I require experience in animation? You don't require experience in animation, uh, but you should have some drawing skills, which is why we asked for the portfolio examples. Yeah. So that, I, I, if you missed that part before, um, there's still information on our website where you can see what the portfolio requirements are. You submit, I think it was 12 pieces of, of, of art, and it yeah. shows that you're able to, you know, have a basic understanding of, of drawing. We're not looking for you to be a pro artist. Lots of people go, oh, you know, I'm not a pro. We're not looking for that. You're going to school to learn. But it shows that you're able, you've already got some basics done. You've got some sense of perspective. Even if we you, you had a, a, you gave our portfolio and we felt, okay, you're not quite ready yet. You're going to get constructive criticism so you can focus on where to practice. And mm. people that have come back for a second submission or a third submission and they've improved and then they've gained entry to the school, they've passed the portfolio requirements. We are very, I mean, strict is a heavy word, but we're very, our, our instructors are very critical and they want to make sure that the people coming to the school have a, have a basic foundation so they can get into the system of what learning is for animation here and then just accelerate very quickly if you yeah. don't have the learning uh, the drawing skills just yet we recommend you take a foundation course first so the best thing to say is if you've got some skills and you've already done some illustration submit that in your portfolio and see what the feedback is yeah 
Yeah, Amelia, any comments on that? Since you look at a lot of portfolios. Yeah, I would also say that um, if taking a, a course is not really a possibility for you, we also have some book recommendations that you can easily yeah. get online or at your local library um, that you can just uh, read and follow. And there's also really good YouTube channels for that as well. We don't offer a foundation course here at Van Arts, uh, but yeah, we can recommend some books if uh, it's not an option for you to take um, um, a good foundation course. Mm -hmm. All right, good question. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so let's see, there's another question, Jeshuran, also from India. Uh, does the diploma in itself give the opportunity for international students to get a post-grad work, work certificate or work permit? So the short answer is no. The diploma, Van Arts is not a, an eligible school for the postgraduate work permit, which is sometimes called the PGWP in Canada. <laughs> Uh, that is an open work permit. Um, so the only way to be eligible for the postgraduate work permit is uh, as a Van Arts student would be if you do a pathway. Uh, we have a pathway with BCIT, we have a pathway with uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University and one with Emily Carr. Uh, and that would allow you to do further studies after Van Arts. And then if you, by going to that school after Van Arts, you, you come with us to get the formal like very specially focused industry training, then you could do further education in either technical arts or business management at one of our partners. That would give you the eligibility then to apply for a postgrad work permit. And a lot of our students from India are doing that. They actually do uh, some additional schooling after Van Arts at one of our pathways, and that gives them the eligibility. Um, there's also different kinds of work permits depending on different situations, which we can't really advise you on, but that's where an immigration consultant or the uh, Immigration Canada website could give you some more ideas about different kinds of uh, work permits as also applying for permanent residency, which is a whole longer, much of a very mm -hmm. long process, but depending on your background and different factors of things that you may have already done, you may have some points that would point you in that direction that you could think about doing that as well. Uh, but that's all stuff that someone from immigration would have to advise you on. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like Carlos's question again. Will I freeze if I wear shorts to class? He's from Mexico, so he mm -hmm. probably thinks Canada is very cold. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't, <laughs> I, I would say you'd no. be okay, but you should, You're fine. you should, you should walk around with um, polar bear spray. There's a lot of attacks with the polar bear. Oh, the bears. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I say that because <clears throat> there's people that really do think that polar bears are all over Canada. That's not the case. It is. Not They're, really. Watch the X Files. That's our city. Yeah. We're okay. We have, You'll we have be aliens, fine. but no, no polar bears. Yeah, I think the coldest it's ever been since I've lived here is like negative two. You're fine. You oh, can wear yeah. shorts. Yeah. You're good. Wear yeah. them. Should be really good. And that's why that's why we're gonna have negative ten now because Amelia. Is <laughs> I'm gonna jinx gone. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, it's climate change is creating all kinds of weird things going on in our town. Um, and then also, since you were talking about books, the there's the book recommended mm -hmm. by is that is that is that the uh, Wayne's Sing, the Wayne's book? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If we can maybe type that, if that's okay. Simplify drawing for planning animation by Wayne yeah. Gilbert. AKA the orange book. The orange book. Because it has an orange cover. Mm -hmm. Put that in the chat as well. And then another book that uh, Wayne recommends is Dynamic Figure Drawing by Bern Colgard. Dynamic Figure Drawing by who? Colgard. Um, so H O. Oh, Colgard, oh, right. Yeah. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Fill your fill your Amazon cart, folks, with some more books, or or your independent bookstore. Okay. Um, now this is a really good question because this kind of um, alludes to something we kind of talked about earlier. But more job opportunities in three D. Why would anyone choose two D then? That's, so I was hoping you get to that. Yeah, I saw yeah. that come up. Yeah. So I would yeah. say, don't hear what we're not saying. We're not saying that there are no job opportunities mm -hmm. in two D. It's just that tonight we're talking about three D, and three D. Uh, we have just as many students um, working in two D, taking our two D stream uh, of the program. 
Um, and so the 2D animation is program is insanely popular. Um, and students can still get jobs in those those industries. It's just with 3D, it's sort of more diverse in the sense that there's mm -hmm. feature films, TV, mm -hmm. like you, you could be Video animating games. Sonic the Hedgehog in a uh -huh. production that's meant to be composited with a live action uh, actor, but you can also work on an, a, a series or a film that's entirely animated with no live action in it at all. Uh, yeah. It's just a different medium. It's a different kind of a, um, of a feel. So, so think of it this way. Um, you have 2D animation and 3D animation. 2D animation is, is pretty much that world. And it's, it's mainly television shows. There's a great demand for it. It's very popular. Lots of studios are making content. 3D started off very expensive. There were only a handful of, of TV shows that could afford it. There were more feature films. But as the technology has improved and gotten better and more photorealistic, mm. the applications has really taken off. Yeah. So that's why like something like The Mandalorian, that didn't exist 10 years ago with the level of realism that they have with, with, with the rancor and the fur texture on things and all of that. Um, that wasn't possible. The Moon Knight TV show, there are sequences in that where he's fully, it's its a full 3D uh, character animation hero, right? Yeah. It's not somebody in an actual costume. So that type of stuff looked fake, a little more fake, you know, uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. But it's gotten to the point now where if you hire on the right animators and they put, like I said, character animation, the, the feeling that there's weight and gravity and, mm. and, and mistakes being made as well as, you know, awesome fight sequences um, that becomes very believable. And so it's applied now to live action. It's applied to fully 3d uh, TV shows, fully 3d movies, um, live action movies that now need a 3d component. Like Ken said for Sonic the Hedgehog video games that need clip scenes. So there's this, bigger demand for 3d animators and there's not enough people going to the pipeline that's mm. that's the way we're seeing how this demand is happening animation is yeah. very hot, hot either way um mm. but 3d has more of a broader hiring pool i think mm. is the best way to describe it yeah so that's that's what i believe is is what's happening here is that people are going to work for a game studio for a couple of years they're working for, mm -hmm. you know, a, a visual effects company or they're doing um, work for uh, uh, a TV show or TV mm -hmm. series or whatever the case is. Yeah. And there's not enough 3D qualified 3D animators to really fill the need for all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ultimately, it comes down to what medium you want to work in as well. Uh, yeah. Right. You as an animator, you know, mm -hmm. three, 3D animators have sort of. I wouldn't say they have a different mindset, but it's just the tools are very different. Uh, Sometimes there's, there's, there's a lot maybe of maybe a little bit more in technology, on. like yeah. just maybe a little bit more. I mean, two D animators are using technology now; it's not hand drawn anymore. Yeah, no. they're using software, but maybe there's an edge there. Maybe I mean, if you like video games and thinking about things as a three D figure, like what the backside of somebody looks like, that's probably you're you're probably more interested in being a three D animator. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of 3D animators who, who have backgrounds in things like sculpture and theater uh -huh. and acting yeah. and dance and movement. Yeah. And all those skills uh, come into play for uh, being um, a 3D animator as well, because you're still dealing with all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Another question. Is Maya the only software for 3D that we'll use in the program? No. You're going to also learn a few other things. You're going to learn Maya for animation, but then you're also going to learn Photoshop. There's a workshop for Photoshop. Um, you also learn Premiere. Um, and yeah, those three are the most important ones for 2D yeah. animation. Sorry, for 3D animation. Yeah. Yeah. So you also get life drawing yeah. too. Yeah, there's life drawing. Which has not got to do language. with software at all. No, but not But you get at to have all, yeah. a class. You get to have a class where you actually get to see the human form and like, okay, how do yeah, things right. move? How do, how's their form and function? Uh, that's a really cool part of things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
Story and visual language is also really amazing. If you're looking into storyboarding after you graduate, that class can help you a lot mm, with storytelling. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And you get that class um, all four terms as, as well as live drawing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. All right. So we're coming up on an hour here. So we can take maybe a, a few more questions. If anyone has a burning question, this would be the time to uh, go ahead and throw it in before we wrap up. There is one other one here from our friend Piyush in India. A basic online course in animation, will that help me to get admission? Or do you need animation work in portfolio? Yeah, so we, we answered this before. And uh, you don't need to submit any animation. We are going to teach you how to animate with Maya. Yeah. So don't worry too much about that. If you do want to go ahead and download Maya, the free trial, play around with it, awesome. That's amazing. It's going to be less stressful during term one. But it's not yeah. a requirement. So I would suggest that you follow the instructions very carefully. They're online uh, for portfolio specifically for 2D and 3D. D and to ask as many questions as you need as you put it together. So if you need to connect with your admissions advisor on a daily basis, that's completely okay. You can email me 10 times a day. I will respond every single time. I will go over your drawings. I will show them to our head of department. We're here to work with you, but don't worry about learning how to animate by yourself. Um, it's more important that you focus on learning how to plan for animation and draw for animation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for answer. that, please use the books. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The orange book. The orange book. Yeah. All right. OK. OK. So look, we want to see you guys at VanArts. We, we want to see you. And more than that, we want to see you graduate from VanArts mm -hmm. and then have your name in the credits so we could add you to our list of shows. And All interview right? you and have you as part of these webinars. That would be yeah. that would be a good thing too. Yeah. That's so right. our next intake is in September. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember the date specifically. Help me out Sixth. here, Emil. Six. Thank you. September. 6th. So September, we are taking admissions for the next four intakes. So September 2022, March 2023, September 2023, and March 2024. But the focus right now is on September. Animation has been a very, very hot industry. We've already mm -hmm. had a lot of people that we've accepted for the September course. So if you are interested in getting uh, trained and skilled and taking one year to get ready to get red job ready, get your application in ASAP uh, and get confirmed for the September 2022 intake. Mm -hmm. It's better to do it now. Don't even wait a month or so. Because no. people keep sending in applications all the time. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And so let's see, the last last comment we have here, again, from Carlos, Cha Cha Charlie, is uh, this is actually a good point. So Maya is the most used software in the 3D industry, which is why we use it to mm -hmm. teach 3D and animation. Teach yeah. But the techniques that you learn there can be used in other software. So that is a good point. You know, some studios might have their own proprietary software. Mm -hmm. Some studios might use a different software than Maya, although not many. Most of them use Maya. But really what we're teaching is the basic principles of character animation. It's one thing to use the software. The software is really just a tool. It's not like a button or a matrix thing where you plug it into your head and says animate it's just a tool and what we're teaching is the basic principles of body mechanics motion and performance mm -hmm. we just happen to be using maya to do that uh, because again most studios are using it but even if you get hired at a studio and they're not using maya but they're using a different <laughs> software as long as you're a good animator they'll bring you on and they'll train mm -hmm. you in whatever package they're using so don't worry about that Mm -hmm. good, good yeah. point. And that gives you the, the shows that you see the credits of our grads working on, you see the character coming to life in those shows. Mm -hmm. So you get yeah. an idea that it's not just, okay, great, they rendered this, they, they built it, they built the assets. You get to have an idea of, of what that character is as a being. Mm -hmm. <laughs> totally. Good. All right. Well, you guys have been an excellent crowd. Get that portfolio the best you can. There you go. Word of word of encouragement. And um, so we're going to sign off for now. Uh, we will sort of um, iris out with another really short video just to end the webinar. Um, and 
with a few more of our grads and the kind of stuff that they're doing, the kind of stuff that they're jazzed about. And uh, thanks again, everyone, for joining us. Really good questions. Yep. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you at VAX, okay? Apply tonight. Right. There you yes. go. Take care. That 3D animation, you get to create and give that character personality and you get to give them life and give them energy. And that just really drew me in immediately. When I saw Life of Pi, and you know, I just remember like crying. I'm like, I'm going to do this. So uh, yeah, here I am. <laughs> I knew that I didn't want to do engineering. I just wanted to do something creative. Did the bouncing ball and I was like, that's it. I just want to do whatever this is. I just want to do this. But it was just love at first sight.